welcome back to the floor. So today, a uh, number of things going on. First off, we're going to be replacing the rear caster wheels on this here C300. This is my sort of utility chair that I've been using while I'm here because it's muddy. Why is my phone ringing? But anyways, I've been using this as my utility chair because it's a little bit muddy here and I'm always running around in the dirt and gravel and working on stuff in the bus. So I don't want to prematurely wear out my F3 while I'm building the bus. So this thing fits the bill for that pretty well. I actually just ordered some drive tires today. I don't know when they're gonna be here. It'll probably be like a week or more, but we have replacements for the rear. These, yeah, they are bald and everything, but also the bearings in here are really screwed up. I guess I probably should have filmed this before I got out of the chair, but well, yeah, we're getting some crazy clicking out of these bearings. So someone graciously gave me a pair of these rear caster wheel assemblies for this chair. They're actually gray tires. They're just wrapped in uh, protective plastic, but these are complete assemblies and they come with new bearings. So what we're gonna do, since these bearings are the same size as these bearings, at least as far as I know, last time I recall they were, we're going to take the bearings out of these wheels, which are still fine, and transplant them up here to get rid of the clicking, crunching noises that's going on. So anyways, I've got a jack around here somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. So we're gonna pick up the back of this chair and swap some tires, then do other things. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. I just got some battery boxes delivered for my batteries. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but uh, the batteries go in there like length. <laughs> the batteries go in there lengthwise, like like this. And I've got two of those, but I found a spot that those are gonna go in the bus. And I'm just waiting on some welding cable and some other stuff to show up. And yeah, anyways, let's get to work. Conveniently, this low profile Harbor Freight Jack just happens to fit under here. You have to be careful though, because this plastic housing on the back sticks out about half an inch. And you don't want to try and lift the chair on that because it'll just ruin the back housing. So I think we should be good here. Yeah, there we go. That got us enough clearance. Yeah, these... Well, they're not clicking at the moment, but especially on this side, the bearings are really bad. This is all super gross. Um, should have grabbed a rag or something. But yeah, trust me when I say these bearings are clicking and making insane noises. Oh, also, when your tires wear out enough, the tires themselves make a rubber, like, sort of crunching, squeaking noise. So the tread on these isn't really that much to begin with, as you can see, but when the tires wear out, they get annoying on... Many, many levels of annoyingness. Luckily, we have a filthy rag here that someone prepared for me earlier. So let's uh, clean a little bit of the schmoo off of this. Okay, so these are pretty easy to replace. I don't recall if I've done a video on the C300 or caster bearings. I did one a long time ago on the old channel, or the other channel, but anyways, whatever. Um, so just pop a little party cap off here, and we're gonna have a bolt and a nut. And that goes all the way through to this side, which is an Allen key. Ah, just right. That's a five millimeter. Then we're gonna need a socket for the other side, which is um, of some size. Looks like maybe 12. Hey, there we go. It's a ah, 13. So a simple process. Put your Allen wrench on this side, wrench or socket wrench on the other, and twist. And then in a short order, you'll have a pile of parts fall on the floor. And then this whole thing should slide off. There's a washer in here too. There we go, washer. See, bearings. And these ones are pretty much fine. And then we have just bolt. And that's all that holds everything together, like some sort of weird sandwich. Oh, we've got this guy here too, our bushing. Ooh, look at that. The uh, 
the color has faded ever so slightly. Oh, it does not come with this thing, so don't lose this. And looks like our washer's already in there. So yeah, this is gonna be easy. We'll just uh, slide this in here, theoretically, carefully. Oh, there's a, um, see in the middle part there? There's a uh, sort of a shaft piece. Spacer, bushing, that's the word. So you gotta kinda line that up. Let's give it the old, there we go. Oh wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. We gotta keep taking all this apart. We gotta take these bearings out. Okay, so to take out the bearings, you basically just loosen this here thing, but conveniently there's nothing to hold it in place. Oh here, maybe we can do the old screwdriver, do the old like, screwdriver extendo trick here. There we go. And the thought is, when you remove this top screw, everything will just fall out the bottom. There you go, pan head screw. Let's get this guy out of here. This is our anti-flutter thing. This is back when they used O-rings. <laughs> oh, there's another nut in there. Interesting. Okay, so I haven't had the back of these C300s apart before. Weird, wait, is there only one bearing? At this point in the stage, I'm sitting here, this is my only chair that I have nearby, and I need to get tools that I don't have. So, yeah, about that. I'm gonna see if I can get this loose using unconventional methods, I'll be right back. Okay, well, I need a giant socket, and I don't have one, so we're just gonna put the new wheel on. I'm gonna hop back in the chair, go get the parts that I need, and then um, we'll do this again. So this just fell out, so we'll put that back in. And where's our new bolt? There it is. Thread this through. Slide this on here. Put our washer in. And which one of these nuts was the new one? I think it's this one here. There we go. And just like before, we will put this in here, use this over here, and we'll tighten it down until it stops. The nice thing about having a spacer in there is you can get this pretty tight. Well, obviously you don't want to strip these um, Allen cap bolt thingies, but you can get them pretty tight and it's just going to tighten against that um, color thing in there that I keep forgetting the name of. And you don't have to worry about tightening it too much and the wheel's not spinning because, yeah, engineering in Sweden. So, I'm going to... I guess we can compare just for no reason. Shiny. <laughs> I didn't realize the color changed quite that much. That's um, fairly substantial. I guess while I'm sitting here with my finger in my nose, we'll pull the bearings out of this, which I believe just takes a little bit of pounding. Do I even have a hammer? I don't think I do. I'm unprepared. Here, we'll use this convenient roll of tape as a spacer. Hey, look, it's a uh, Spacer and a bearing. We can do that again with the other side. So I'm gonna get a bigger Allen wrench so I don't damage the uh, shielding on that bearing because if you pound on this black part, it's gonna damage things. Yeah, that was easy. Ta-da! Now we have bearings, which I am dropping in the dirt. Yeah, and these seem to be in good shape. So we'll set those aside for later. So we're gonna set all these parts out of the way. I'm gonna spin this chair around and slither back up into it. Go get my tool kit that I need, the other one. And uh, we'll try this again. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? I believe this is a 22 millimeter. Ha, huh. look at that. I suppose one convenient thing about having this tire on here is it, yeah. 
Get that in a half inch drive. Do I not have a 22 millimeter in half inch drive? I don't. So one convenient thing about having the tire on here is now I have something to hold on to as I remove this. Actually, I'm gonna slide over here and put my foot. There we go. Yeah. Okay, that was tight. Now, in theory, this should all just fall out of here. Hey, look at that. So we've got, well, nothing. Oh, there's a, there's a bolt head on the bottom. Interesting. All right, well, probably gonna need that for reassembly. And we'll just use the standard pounding on a Allen wrench method for removal. Hit on one side, then the other, it's back and forth. Okay, we've got this little thing which we need to keep. And then I think both the bearings come out the bottom on this one. Maybe? Oh no. Ah, there's a circlip in there. So these need to come out the top. Uh, come to think of it, using a deep wall socket and a hammer would probably be a much better way to do this. I don't have a hammer. So we'll use this half inch drive ratchet that's already broken. Hey! So this bearing is, um, it doesn't feel bad, but, oh yeah, it's got quite a bit of play. Both of them do. Anyways, gross. We're gonna grab our other bearings, which we've prepared earlier. Actually, I'm gonna clean the inside of this a little bit first, because professionalism. Yeah, there's a circlip in the middle there, and that's what kind of holds the two bearings from going the wrong direction or something. Oh, I might be able to show you that, actually. Yeah, see? Circlip. So let's go ahead and gingerly install this one. There we go. Then we'll drop our little spacer in down through the top. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll do that backwards. This ratchet is already broken, like I said. And the sound will change when it gets all the way in there. There we go. Now this is a hack job, I will admit. This is an old crusty chair with thousands of miles on it and uh, yeah, so if this is your shiny everyday chair or whatever, probably don't treat it like this. Okay. Now, will that stay in there? No. Clean it off again. Now, this is where you need several sets of hands, maybe. I'm going to put this in here. And then, using one finger to hold this, we're going to slide everything up in there. Jack's not in the way. Okay, there we go. There was no washer in there, I guess, so we'll just load this back in here. I don't know if there's a torque spec. I think you can just tighten it down and it should be fine. Um, one way you'll know, though, is if this stops rotating, you've tightened it too much. Anyways, I'm just gonna give this a tightening until I feel like it's tight. Which is about yay much. And there we go. It's um, a wheel attached to the back of a chair. This arm's a little bit loose, but that's just uh, kind of how C300s are. I think a long time ago on a, I think it was on the steampunk chair actually. I put some bushings in here and did a few of the things and something, but whatever. Um, yeah, there we go. Now we get to do it over there, but I already showed you this side, so that I'll just do that thing where you cut to it and it's like already done. Oh, I almost forgot. You gotta put the little rubber cap back in there. Wait a minute. Bonus nachos. I've been missing the caps for this forever. Will this fit? Oh, it totally does. Oh, I guess we have to reassemble everything though. Hang on, where's that other piece? Um, oh. 
here it is. This little grimy thing here. So I'll put this back in here. Put this in and tighten it down. Oh man, our bonus nachos went stale. This won't fit in there now. Because that whole thing rotates. Eh, it was a nice thought. Whatever. It's been open to the elements since I got this thing, so it can just continue to live on that way. Okay, now I'm going to work on the other side. Oh, my SD card's almost full. I got four minutes left. Eh, I'll be back. Ta-da! The other side's done, or almost done, or something. I need to replace the O-rings in these things, though. The, uh... Caster flutter on this thing is, well, yeah, it's got a lot of it. I don't know what size those O-rings are. I don't know right now, and I'm not going to find out by the time I publish this video. But if you're watching this at a future date, it's December 2021 right now. Um, and I do manage to find out. I will put the information in the description down below. I'm sure Permobile has a part number for it, and I'm sure they're like $37 O-rings. But hey, um, I don't think there's a reason we need to pay that much or whatever. So, anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up, and then we got other stuff to talk about. And okay, there we go. We don't have the crunching noises anymore. Although we do have squeaking because I cleaned those O-rings. Uh, I usually put a little bit of silicone lube in there. Don't do that to your chair, just replace the O-rings. I'm exquisitely lazy and don't feel like finding O-rings, and I'd rather just spray some silicone lube in there which doesn't get rid of the caster flutter, all it does is get rid of the squeaking. But our crunching is now gone. So even though those bearings look like they were okay, um, under load, they behave completely differently than they do when, you're, when they are in your hand. All right, I'm going to clean up this mess and then empty off this SD card and then on to the next thing. This thing's been sitting here overnight cooling down. Yesterday I left for a while and when I came back it was trying to turn on the compressor but it was failing miserably and just making these buzzing noises. So I think our compressor might have locked up. But anyways, let's see what happens when I push this here button. Yep, it's bad. You can hear the buzzing. And there it tried to, it quit trying to start up. Now when you turn it off, it'll keep trying to start the compressor for some reason, so we gotta unplug this. Alright, well, um, I guess that sucks. If the compressor goes bad, there's not much you can do about it. Um, time to exchange it. Okay, here's a replacement. So, one thing I'm gonna do differently this time, since it's clearly sitting on its side, and whatever, I'm gonna let it sit for 12 hours in an upright position before I try to power it up. Because with small compressors, they have oil in the loop, and if they've been laying on the random sides, the oil's not where it's supposed to be, and it takes a while for that oil to get back down in there, blah, 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 so yeah. And I'm going to be careful with this packaging because I'm going to send back the other one in this box. Let's see if this one's been dropped, shall we? So, looks like a thing. I wonder if the wheels are attached to this one too. So apparently this one did not come with wheels at all. That's weird. This packaging is set up so the wheels can be on there. Oh. Let's see if it has a filter. Hey, this one has a filter. All right, cool. Let's see if the condenser's trashed on this one. Okay, condenser looks like it's in a little bit better shape. I suppose I could just take the wheels off the other one. Um, hmm. Okay, this one's a lot less broken than the other one was. Cool, well, I guess we'll leave this here till tomorrow and then uh, see if it works. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Let's see what this thing sounds like. 
Um, it doesn't work. Hear that buzzing? It's the same thing the other one was doing. Are you kidding? Yeah, the compressor's locked up. Um... Huh, well, apparently I get to send back two of these now. Um, hmm. That's not a good noise. I think our transmission's finally uh, getting close to kicking the bucket on this thing. It does still drive and shift, but I was getting overdrive blinking codes a few minutes ago. I restarted it and it went away, but uh, it makes these hideous squealing noises. Come on, can we get into overdrive? 265,000 miles on this thing. Of course, I just filled it with fuel. Yeah, it sounds like the pump in the front of the transmission, the planetary gears are starved or they're going bad. Oh yeah, there we go, they got the blinking back. Um, hmm. Well, it still drives. I'm gonna get the thing back and then uh, something. Do you hear that squealing when I first tip into it? We got lots of smoke. Um, uh, yep, this transmission's cooked. Um, We're almost where we need to go though. Jeez. Uh, the back window seems to be covered in something, so I think the transmission might be spewing. I don't know. I don't know if we have any more forward movement on this thing or not. Come on, you can do it. Okay, do we have reverse? That's the next question. Smidgen of reverse. Come on, 10 more feet. Ooh, we've got rainbows on the lift. I don't know if you can see that smoke, but, um, yeah, our transmission is cooked. Yeesh. So I've had this thing for probably eight years now. And well, to be honest, I didn't expect it to last as long as it did. You know, I guess we'll put the lift away. Yeah, we have a nice sheen of oil all over the back of this thing. Oh, good. Anybody want to buy a van? Yeah. Remember this thing here, this dehumidifier? It's kind of been an insane saga. That one's also broken. I got a hold of the manufacturer directly. And they said, yeah, well, normally that's an Amazon thing and we don't deal with it, blah, blah, blah. But in your case, we're willing to work with you. They said, return both of the broken ones to Amazon, get your money back, and we're going to send you a brand new one. And we will open the box to make sure it actually works before we send it to you. And we will package it up extra well or good or better or more awesomely or something. So anyways, that thing's going back and... I will have a supposedly brand new one that's not remanufactured. So a friend here locally was hearing about my problems with this and he was like, hey, I got something that'll help you out. Here comes a whip transition. Whee! He gave me this thing. You might be wondering, hey, Dan, why do you need an air conditioner? Well, this is actually a heat pump. Yes, it does air condition, but it's also a heater and a dehumidifier and it's made by an actual brand that knows how to make stuff. 
So yeah, this is gonna be great. Oh, hang on, I forgot to empty the SD card. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. A nice freshly cleaned SD card. So anyways, about this thing. Um, that's gonna be a great backup heat source and dehumidifier for use on the bus. Only problem is right now, it pulls a little bit too much power for the current setup I'm using. With 50 feet of extension cord and a giant compressor, that thing's rated for like 1200 watts. I need to actually hook my power analyzer up and see what it actually pulls. But the voltage drop through that cable and then through the network of extension cords that are inside there, yeah, it's not gonna be a good thing. It might work, but uh, running compressors like that with, well, it, it's not good for the compressor, we'll just say that. But anyways, um, yeah, so, uh, new one of these things, eventually, and we've got that. Did I say it would be a great backup heat source in case the pellet stove broke? Yeah, anyways, uh, that's gonna be super handy to have. I plugged it in and it seems to work fine. Of course it does, the person I got it from wouldn't lie to me, <laughs> so, anyways. So, about this van over here, you saw the clips earlier, transmission's having problems. I could potentially fix it, and it's one of those deals where if I had stopped driving it the second I heard the noise, well, it'd probably be fine. And to be honest, the transmission in it might still be like, okay, but it's definitely not happy. I bought that van maybe seven years ago, something like that. And when I bought it, I didn't buy it as a wheelchair van. It happened to be one, but I got it from the original owner actually. And he did a lot of highway miles with the thing. But I got it and the lift wasn't working. Turns out really the only thing wrong with it was an automatic circuit breaker. Now, <laughs> if you've watched this channel for more than any amount of time, you realize that that van has, well, it won't be the subject of a lot of grief necessarily. It's usually gotten me where I need to go, but I get stuck on that lift quite a bit. But anyways, it has, was it 267,000 miles on it? Anyways, when I bought that, I did not expect it to last more than three months. So the fact that it's lasted, what, seven years, I paid a thousand bucks for it. I put a new torque converter in the transmission right after I got it. I think I put some tires on it. But other than that, I'm super happy with that amount of time for the dollars spent on the thing. So I was planning on selling it anyways. There isn't a reason for me to put money into it. That UVL lift, the main hydraulic line's leaking on it and it's not really safe to use. I mean, I use it, but I definitely wouldn't want to sell it to someone or give it away or anything like that because, well, yeah, <laughs> all those assorted reasons. But I think I'm just gonna let it go. I'll probably throw it up for sale for cheap. I, I don't know exactly. Um, might just take it to a recycler. I haven't figured that out. I'm gonna pull a couple random parts off of it, but for now, I just wanted to explain that. I'm not planning on fixing that thing. It does look nice, but with that many miles and whatnot, oh, and the rear axle as well, has a pretty serious leak on one of the axle tube shafts. Obviously, that's an easy fix, but the rear axle itself on these half-ton vans, service life is maybe 65, 70,000 miles. So if I did keep it, I would have to spend probably two, three thousand dollars without blinking an eye. And then, well, I would still have an old van with a lot of miles on it that's only a half ton. I had thought so a long time ago of actually converting it to one ton running gear. Actually, there was a video about that. If I can think of it, if I can find it, I'll put the link. I can never remember. I have to turn the camera around like this and then point. So it's up to that corner. Is that how this works? Anyways, there'll be a link somewhere for that uh, where I went to look at another van and I was gonna use it to transplant parts, but then that didn't work out for reasons that I explained in that video. So anyways, it is a nice looking van, but trust me, you don't want it. And I think I'm done with it. So anywho, um, trying to think of what else there is. I think I'm gonna start editing this video and then figure out if I need to film anything else, but I think we might be good. Um, Hey, it's Sadie. Oh, she doesn't like the camera. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to call that good for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you Thursday on the live stream at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 3 p.m. Pacific Standard. Yes, every Thursday. All right, see you later. Wait, that sounds like I was ending a phone call. Whatever.
I'll see you guys at some point in the future. 